Turn with me to Daniel 7.18. Okay, so this is all background, guys. I mean, we've laid, we're starting to lay the foundation. It'll take us another week or two to really lay the foundation, and then we'll, we'll, we'll seriously get into uh, our list of verses that we're going to have lots of fun looking at. But um, notice here, Daniel is writing... And um, uh, in fact, let me just back up to verse nine. It says, "I watched till thrones were put in place, and the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame; its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him; ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened." I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. That's the Antichrist, by the way. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That, of course, is the the second coming. That's when the Lord Jesus comes back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and those who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse uh, 8 and 9. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a time and a season. That's talking about when Satan and the other uh, principalities, you can read in Isaiah 24, are going to be thrown into the pit. And of course, Revelation chapter 20. Now notice, it says, I was watching the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should should serve him. Well, obviously, we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, correct? And I think we would all agree that this is talking about the beginning of the millennium. Anybody not see that? And please speak up if you've got questions. That all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by me and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things, those great beasts which are four or four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And if you notice, I've put that there at the top of our, up right up here. This is kind of our, our one of our key verses. And we're going to examine the kingdom that lasts forever, even forever and ever. Now, I've got a question for you. When do you think forever, even forever and ever ends? Anybody? Any thoughts? Only God knows. Only God knows? <laughs> that's a very tactful answer. There is no end, right? I mean, that's the point, right? There's no end to this kingdom. But when does this kingdom start? It starts in the millennium, yes. And we saw the beast was slain. His body was given over to the fire. If you don't believe me, go to Revelation 19, verse 20, which says where the the Lord is going to take the the beast and the false prophet and He's going to throw them into the into the lake of fire, correct? I mean, that's going to happen. So, that before, happens there. Before we answer your question, when yes. does the kingdom start? Yes. When, if, if, you're going to get, if we're going to get an invitation to this wedding supper, when does it start? And where? The wedding, when does the wedding supper wedding start? Supper. Uh, I would say the wedding supper is at the beginning of the millennium. I can't give you the exact day. But I'd say it's, 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 at the, the, ours, it's at the early part of it. The other, another yeah. good friend of ours, Sunday night service, said it takes place in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you, it takes place yeah. on earth. Yeah, it takes place on earth. And I know. does it last? Well, let, let's cruise over to Revelation 19, if you want. Let's, when, when does... I, I don't know. I don't know if it, if it goes throughout the entire millennium, if it's only for a certain segment during the millennium. Do you have an answer? I don't. I, I have an answer, and, uh, it, and, if you, and if we don't have the answer, when you go into the feast, you're going to have troubles because 
Okay. How long, did, how long does the Feast of Tabernacles last, and how does that relate to the wedding supper? Okay. What's the answer? Give us the answer. It, it depends on which one of those six groups you're in, because okay, it's a long answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Because I, I last the entire next Saturday. next week we're going to talk about the the fall feast. So we're going to talk about uh, Yom. Um, Yom Turot, the Feast of Trumpets. We'll talk about uh, Yom Kippur, which is the Feast of or the Day of Atonement. Atonement, and then we'll talk about uh, the the Feast of Tabernacles. But so you're going to have to do that separately for each group in the second in the first resurrection because it's not the same time. Okay. I, I want to see the answer. I'm I'm curious. <coughs> you got me. You sparked my interest here. Okay. So it says in in Revelation 19:19. 19, 19, and I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped the image. These two were cast alive in a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest uh, were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Okay, so... Uh, well, let's see, that's the latter part. I'm sorry. Let's go back to the... The, the first part of the chapter, um, which would be verse uh, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. So here is uh, is really the, the big mention, at least in Revelation, we have of the wedding feast. Now we see we're gonna we're gonna talk very specifically about the wedding feast, so we won't get too far ahead of ourselves here. But this is sort of a a little teaser for what's coming. Okay. Um, so we have that, and then it says, "Into her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints." And then we see, "Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb," and he falls at his feet. That now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. So you have basically the announcement of the marriage of the Lamb. I don't see the marriage of the Lamb happening in this chapter. What he's saying is, it has now come. We've now come up to that part of the of, of world events where that's the next thing. That's the next chapter. But we have to. You know that's right there. It's waiting, okay. But you've got to, you know, hit the play button. And so now the Lord comes on His horse. We're on our horses. We're coming back with Him. And it's now. It's the day of the Lord when He comes back. He destroys the Antichrist and all the works of the flesh and all that stuff. And this is according to Second Peter. 3.10, he says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. The earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So this is when the Lord's coming back. He's destroying the earth, which is already much destroyed. And then he's going to set up his kingdom and it's a kingdom that will never, ever pass away. So what I want you to see here is, is a really a new a new paradigm, and I hope I can at least convince you by the end of the of the semester, if not sooner. But I'm just going to tell you straight up, guys. The traditional view is different, and I held to it for a long time, and I came to a new thought very reluctantly. Because, you know, new thoughts are scary. And uh, people tend to get upset if you have different thoughts other than the traditional. What can I do? Your, your traditional interpretation or timeline would be second coming, millennium, then uh, the great white, great white throne, the destruction of the heavens and earth right here, they're passing away. And then we have what's called the eternal state. 
Okay, the eternal state comes after the thousand years. This is the traditional view. This is my disclaimer to you. This is what I think most everybody else holds to. So they see it, second coming, thousand years, destruction of the heavens and earth, and then of course the new heavens and earth happening after the thousand years, and then we're in this thing called the eternal state. Now, I believe in the eternal state. It's going to last forever. But what I read in Daniel is that we've got the second coming. We've got the destruction of the Antichrist and the false prophet. They're thrown into the flames here. <coughs> and then we have this kingdom that's going to last forever, even forever and ever. Now, it seems to me forever, even forever and ever means, you know, forever. And if we have the destruction of the heavens and earth at the end of the thousand years, it seems like that would put an end to the party. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. What do you guys think? I mean, it, it sounds like that's like even for a thousand years, and then we'll do something new. So what I'm suggesting is that, and, I, and I'm going to prove this to you from Scripture, okay? I'm not just making stuff up. But that the thousand years is simply the last phase in normal existence, let's call it, okay? Where you have people that have an opportunity to choose between doing what is sinful and corrupt, choosing their own way, or choosing God's path. But the, the, the new heavens and the new earth start here at the beginning. Let me give you another verse to chew on uh, from now until next week. If you go to Isaiah 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. And of course, what is the parallel passage? Revelation 21.1 which says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. So, if the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, we're now on the second set, right? The first heaven, first earth. Now we're on second heaven, second set in Revelation 21. It sounds like there's only going to be two. So therefore, in Isaiah 65, 17, that must be the second set, right? It must be the same as Revelation 21. Well, you know, Doug, I was looking at both of these passages, and there seems to be a significant difference. And uh, that, and uh, Isaiah mentions death. Yes. And then uh, Revelation ah. says there will be no more death. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, that's right. And the, the thing is, how do we look at that? Oh, there's all kinds of exciting things to discuss. I'm going to give you a counter-argument next week on that. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun here. Okay, well, but still. And we're going to look at the verb tense of, the, of that particular scripture. I begin to do that. It isn't the, that, that isn't an event, that's a process. Well, it's, it's in the present tense, that's true. Okay. And, yeah. and uh, Day of the Lord, same thing. That's a process. It's, there's 14 events in the in the Day of the Lord okay. process. So, so we don't want to build logic off of that as though it were an event. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's go back to my point. Revelation 21:1. How many sets of heavens and earth are there going to be? What we're trying to do is we're trying to work out the details, right? Right, guys. We're, we're taking an honest look at the Bible and we're saying, what does it say? Okay. Why do you want to limit it to two or three? Why can't you make it seven? You can make it as many as you want. I'm just going to go with what the Word says. That's no. all. <laughs> we're going to use it. Because the first time it was created at all, and it was created in <coughs> that glorified body. And then there was changes that led to the. But then there was another big change that took place at Noah's time. Lots of changes. But it wasn't a new heaven and a new earth. It should behave differently. Okay, but... <laughs> it, yeah, things, certainly things changed, 
But John says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah, you're right. That new heaven and new earth is only one time that happened. Okay. Right, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Do we all agree that we're in the first heaven and first earth? Yeah. I mean, first sort of means, what does first mean? First. <laughs> right, you know, so God created the first heaven and first earth. We're no longer in the first phase of it, but it is the first heaven. Okay, but it's still, it's still, this is it, right? I mean, this is the one that God created 6,000 years ago. Coming later. <laughs> <laughs> but is this the one that God created six, you know, roughly 6,000 yeah. years ago? This is the one we need a quantum leap to get up. Okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, God destroyed the first one at the time of Genesis 1 2. Oh boy, don't let's not even go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it was yes, Read my book. Yeah, no, no gap theory. Okay. All right, well, all right, this is going to be a great class. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Okay. Well, good. This is what I want you guys to do. All right. I don't want you to just. Well, Doug said that it must be true. Okay. I mean, you can kind of do that if you want. Don, you can do that. <laughs> but I want you guys to be thinking. I want you to be thinking. Uh, you know, what, what does Scripture really say? We've we've been given a traditional view. All right. And I'm putting the traditional view on trial. Okay. And let's see if it stands. If it does, great. Then I'm, I'll eat humble pie. Okay. If it doesn't, then let's be willing to take a new look and say, maybe, you know, remember that puzzle that we were talking about? Maybe there's some pieces that have kind of gotten jammed in there that they look like they fit pretty decently. And they did until we tried to put the other pieces in. But once we try to put the whole puzzle together, we discovered that we have like a hundred pieces that just, they don't really fit. Yeah, we can leave this one piece there, but if I, if I switch them out, maybe it'll fit better. And, and I don't see anything wrong with doing that. Okay? Because we're not here to defend tradition. We're here to, to just say what does Scripture really tell us. Okay? So I know that I'm, you know, I'm the odd man out because I'm not accepting the traditional position. But I'm willing to, to uh, you know, play the game. So let's have fun. And, yes. Okay. Let me write these down. My two assignments. Okay. Two assignments. Yes. One is, when are you going to take away the seed? I've got an answer for that. Okay. I, I've thought about these things. Listen, I, because I knew you were coming. So. Yeah. And the other okay. is, I've got an answer. Yeah. And the other is, when will the others in the first resurrection have the same abilities that the church will have to operate in both heaven and on earth? Okay, we'll, we'll talk about and that. What quantum leap? What quantum leap is going? And where is that going to be? <laughs> I've got answers for that too. Okay. Back in yes. the end, where the provision said it is. Yes. Okay. We're going to have a good time. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this this class. And uh, Lord, thank you that we can take an honest look at your word. We pray you'd teach us. Lord, just teach us what is true. That's all we want to know. What does the Bible say? And so we pray that you would uh, quicken our minds, show us. Uh, these things, they're exciting. Uh, Lord, we could hardly wait. However it turns out, Lord, we want to be there with you. We want to see your glory. And we want to do your will here and now. So we may hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.